affects another, right? A relationship, one affects another. So let's look at our water column. A water column is just a vertical representation. It's like a sliver of the ocean. So if you can imagine, we are standing at the top at zero meters, right? That's where the wind and the waves are. That's where you would float, where you would dive in right off of a boat. So the surface is zero meters. The reason why a water column starts with zero at the top, again, that's where the waves are. If we flip this and put the waves at the bottom, this graph won't make sense. So at the top, we have our zero meters. And of course, because we are near the sun on the surface, we're going to see increased temperature. That's obvious, so the water's gonna be warmer. Now remember, if the water is warmer, we're actually going to see dissolved salt increase, AKA salinity. So when salinity increases, we're going to actually see less gas solubility. So that means the ability for gas to dissolve. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't gases, but we're gonna to get to that in a moment. So we're gonna see a decreased gas solubility because you can imagine when salt is dissolving, it's taking up a lot of space. Obviously, we're going to have a decreased depth because we're near the surface and a decreased pressure because right now our ears aren't popping, especially if you're here in Florida watching this video, your ears aren't popping on the surface of the ocean because there is decreased pressure. Now, when we're on the surface, that's where photosynthesis is occurring. So here's that exception to that decreased gas solubility. Remember, solubility is the ability for something to dissolve. So in this case, we're talking about gas. So when we're on the surface or near the surface, we're going to see more photosynthesis occurring. That means there's going to be algae, phytoplankton that are going to take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they're going to use water. We're in the ocean, so it works out really well. And they're going to release oxygen. That means the highest levels of oxygen will be near the surface of the ocean because photosynthesis is occurring. So photosynthesis is releasing oxygen. Oxygen is a good thing for organisms that live in the water like fish. Also, we can think of like atmospheric carbon dioxide and oxygen. They're being mixed in through wind and waves into that surface layer and being forced down because again, the waves kind of like a washing machine are forcing the surface to mix down. And of course it's gonna mix further. We'll talk about that soon. But first let's talk about pH. pH is the measure of whether something is acidic or basic alkaline. Now, when we think about increased pH on the surface, if photosynthesis is using carbon dioxide that means we're going to see a lower amount of carbon dioxide in the water because it's being used by organisms that do photosynthesis. So instead of carbonic acid forming, we're going to see carbonate form. And that just means the surface has less available carbon dioxide to make carbonic acid, which is an acid, carbonic acid, acid, right? Makes sense. So since there's less carbonic acid, the surface is going to allow for a more basic or alkaline pH because of photosynthesis. So a lot happening on the surface. Then at one to 1,000 meters, 100 to 1,000 meters, we're going to reach the oxygen minimum layer. This is where the most amount of cellular respiration and decomposition is occurring. That's why it's called oxygen minimum layer. So put it all together. What do you think is happening with oxygen? It's probably pretty low. After a thousand meters, you're going to see everything from the surface is now the opposite. So down after a thousand meters, it's deep, right? It's dark, no sunlight, and it's cold. So it's deep, it's dark, which means decreased temperature, and right, we're going to see no photosynthesis. So we're going to have a decreased temperature, which means salt will not dissolve easily or well at all. And now the water is going to be very dense. So it's going to sink. Cold water sinks, warm water floats. So the cold, dense water will sink. Salt does not dissolve well, which leaves more space for gas solubility. So we'll actually see that there's an increase in gas solubility. The increase in gas solubility is also due to an increased pressure for that gas to be able to dissolve in the water a little bit better. 
Now, we already know that we're increasing the depth because now we're going from 1,000 to 3,000 meters at the bottom. Now, that isn't a true representation. The ocean can be deeper in locations, but 3,000 is far enough to reach the seafloor and understand the vertical water column. Now, let's talk about this pH. So on the surface, we said there was photosynthesis. After a thousand meters, sorry, there is not any sunlight. It is dark down there. So that means no photosynthesis is occurring. So there's going to be excess carbon dioxide. Since there is excess carbon dioxide, carbonic acid will form. Now we have a more acidic deep ocean. Now, the average ocean is like 8.1. So of course, it's gonna be high and low in some places, but we have to remember, if there is more carbonic acid, that means it's probably in the deeper ocean because there's less photosynthesis. On the surface, more photosynthesis uses that carbon dioxide and decreases the amount of carbonic acid, allowing for a more basic surface. So keep that in mind. This water column is extremely helpful. Make sure that you look it over. You can kind of tell what's happening with those relationships. And of course, what's happening with each of the layers of the ocean. Till next time, see you on chapter two.